Guys, Jay Walters here. Happy K Man's Golf Pollution Episode 2. We are going to work through the bits that we did at the start in Episode 1. We're going to take them into the top end of the bag. We are going to focus on those really easy clubs to hit, like driver, fairway, wood off the deck, hybrid as well. Easy for some. How are we, mate? We good? I'm good. Sun's shining. This, you know, look at that. You travel all this way down here, and the sun comes with me. Does come with me, or does it just stay here? Yeah, yeah, I wish it stayed yeah. with um, So, for anyone who's not watched episode one, make sure you go and check it out. Um, we've looked at the start point, the initial pieces of the puzzle that we've got. We've worked out the key pieces that we want to change. Change is a funny word. Um, maybe improve. If we if we improve it, everything will improve with it. So we look at improve rather than the word change. Yeah. Okay. Whenever I say change, I'm just want to say. Um, so that we've improved two pieces of the puzzle, and we're going to now work those pieces into the big end. So we're going to look at driver. We're going to look at getting some launch data. Um, we will have got some launch data on the last one, but a little bit of a technical hitch, shall we say, sort of stopped us there. We're going to look again a bit of launch data for you, so we can have a look at his launch angle, spin numbers, um, and all that kind of thing for that speed and full speed as we go through. So. We're going to start this by using the, the biggest club in the bag, the longest club in the bag. And as we go into fairway wood, and as we go into hybrid, it will feel a little bit easier because the short, the shaft, the easier it's yeah, not to feel. Um, so we're going to start with driver. We're going to hit four or five drives. Again, I'm going to use the, the iPad to play in slow motion, analyze it, and do the drawing like we did in the first one. Um, and we'll have a look at making sure that the key positions are right. I'm making sure that, especially when it comes to driver, set up and a little tweak here and there makes a huge difference. So we're going to have a little look at it. We're going to look at getting a bit of launch data in there as well. Have a little look at what we need to do and see what differences we can make to that data, the improvements. Yeah, it's a improvement. uh, so that off the tee, we can start to get the ball not just in the fairway but we can get that extra yardage which is going to make the next shot a little bit easier Great. we've got a nine iron instead of a seven iron or a, you know a six iron instead of a four iron or a hybrid golf becomes much easier yeah so it's all great being nice and straight and in the fairway and playing from the fairway is key but playing from the fairway further away is probably at a slight disadvantage from playing out of the rough with a wedge in your hand and yeah, if you look right, at yeah. the elite golfers, the guys who win the most money, the guys who hit the golf ball the furthest, not the guys who hit the fairways the most yeah. the furthest time. So distance is key. We all want to hit the driver. We all want to hit the bar. So let's have a look at how it is at the minute. And then we'll have a look at what improvements we need to make to start to see the change, which will, we might miss a few fairways. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, oh, I, a lot of you know <laughs> it's one of those things where, you know, I don't, you know, if you miss the fairway and it's a hundred yards left, all right, okay. Yeah. But if you miss a fairway here and there and you've got a shot to the green, missing a fairway is not a bad thing. No. You know, if you've got a shot, right. If you hit the fairway, perfect, because we'd love to hit every fairway, but we'd love to hit every fairway having the same club that we might hit if we missed it. Correct. So don't worry out there if you miss some fairways, worry more if you're not hitting the ball far enough so the next shot you play is with a club that is very long, yeah. that you might not feel as comfortable with rather than with a shorter club, a bit more loft, which is instantly going to give you more confidence. Yeah. So, let's hit a few. Which is right, like you say, because then I'd be using like, trying to use a free wood, which again, I can't hit very well. Whereas you gain that distance and then get another thir- Get another 30 yards, okay, well I'm going to use nine now, which I'm more confident with. Okay, so again, we'll get the footage. We'll look at it from both angles in slow motion as well as we did in episode one. Star Wars to the Okay, Right, and again. So nice to see the feeling. How does it feel that like new movement with the driver? I can feel like a nice weight shift. Feels a little bit easier. Yeah, Feels like a more natural movement rather than that, um, 
almost engineered move that we get with our hands and arms. And like instantly, I feel like I'm getting more out of it. Like even that, I know it's yeah. So again, there we've got we've got straight. Fourth flight is a little bit low, so we'll see that in the data with our launch conditions and our technology comes to the fore, comes to the fruition. Mainly, that technology means my iPad really because it's not been behaving itself. Oh, okay. But that low pull fly is common for me. Okay, let's do two more. Okay, right, let's have a little look at what we've got now. Right guys, so looking at these swings here now from the driver, we can look at, well, I'm just going to zoom in for a second there, we can look at from here, he's very, very even with his pressure, his width of stance there, his fraction wider than shoulder width. So we're pretty nice in that respect, therefore position is just in line with the, the instep left foot as well. So really good there, really liking the fact that the, the club head and shaft are in the right position and we've not got the shaft or the head a little bit more like this way, like you would do with an iron design. The club has got the shaft in the right place, so really nice from that point there. As we can see again from down our target line view, got a little bit of this excess knee flex but again that's something that we're going to look at as and when we get around to it at the moment so starting a face on view we're going to move this swing on a little bit here so we see the initial movement away starting to get a feeling of that trailing leg straightening out a little bit which is great, but what's happening is we're just pushing a little bit too much pressure then over onto this side, so a little bit forward, and that's creating a little bit more of a downward angle attack, so we're hitting a little bit steeper onto it. So as we see here, as the rotation takes hold and turn starts nicely, we can just see here now there's the, the downward angle, and as we come into impact, now we see that shaft lean forward in there. So angle attack very, very low. So that's going to result in that lower ball flight and sort of lack of carry distance as we go through there. So ball comes out quite low. And then continuing round into the finish, finish position nicely rotated. So the lower half of the body working nicely. We're just getting too much pressure on the lead side. The back swing and that's creating that down angle. Looking at it from down our target line view from here. So we can see club moving around. And there it goes. So moving around. A little bit of a straightening from this angle on the face on view. Looks like that trailing leg, that right leg is dead straight, but we can see the flex is still being held in it. Body's turning, so much more rotation coming through here. Some direction still in that position to the right there, but we can see as we go through face really nice, but that shaft lean forward gives us that really low ball fight. So a little start on target and when it's gone, we've got that really low ball fight from there. Guys, do not adjust your sets. Don't try and tilt the telly or anything. 
this is exactly what we're looking to do. So when we've looked at the data, the launch data with the driver, we noticed that the ball flight is always fairly, fairly low, so we don't get enough carry distance. And on the launch data, the, the angle that the ball is launching is also very low, you know, it's two and three degrees. We need to change it. If we can change two and three degrees into 12, 13, 14 degrees, the carry distance will jump up enormously, just yeah. from the same type of impact and the same type of, of club head speed because we are now hitting the ball this way and not this way. So we've seen there when we've analysed how the reasons why the launch is low with the face and the being a little bit behind the hands and the handle coming through impact so everything's too much over great with the iron but not so much with the driver so a great drill to help you get the feeling and this is a great one for, for Lloyd as well is to make sure that we're stood on a upslope so all the pressure's back on this trailing leg and he gets the feeling of just turning as he would normally but everything's moving up, so rather than moving this way, we get the feeling of being behind the impact, hitting upwards, ding, ling, 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 somebody's just finished the adventure golf there. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna make some practice swings, and we're actually gonna hit a shot as well from this position. So just get a few practice swings with the driver. So right knee straight in, and hips turning, everything following the turn, but the pressure stays on the foot. So where we've seen there in the drill where everything's gone forward, that's what we want to avoid. We want to keep this right foot, the trail foot for Lloyd, flat on the ground at all times. So again we see where it's gone forward there. So back swing, pressure, maybe 90% there. Keep it there all the way through to the top. Okay, and now keep the pressure in this foot as you swing down. So this will stay flat, so you'll feel behind. You'll actually feel no, no, no moving forward but you're feeling like you stay backwards all the way, yeah? So your hand, so you're going to stay right in front of me at all times. So back on that side, stay there, all the way. So backward and stay this way, all the way. So turn the hips. That's it, keep them going. Keep the club swinging, so you're feeling back. I want you to keep that heel on the ground. This is the only time I'm going to ask you to keep that heel on the ground, just for this exercise. That's it. The feeling now of you being all the way back here is quite difficult, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. massively. Right, we're going to hit this shot. Okay, I'm going to change the camera angle in a minute because if he flushes this, he'll probably carry the roundabout over there. Okay, right, so we're going to tee it up. Okay, now because we're going to tee it up, I'm actually going to get yourself in position. We're going to turn this way a bit more. And that's it, okay, come this a little bit more down this angle. Okay, right, I'm going to tee it up here. Now it's not the greatest to fly, I want you to stay where you are. We're going to tip there because this is a launch pad now. So we need to use the launch pad and push it upward. That's why we've got to stay behind. If I just get the camera angle and change it around here. There we go. I'm just going to hold it here so you guys can see from this angle. Okay. So keep everything on that backside. And just sweep up. Use it as a ramp to launch upwards. Okay. It's great. Because what's happening there is, you know, normally if you were to do that, the club would just hit the ground maybe eight inches or so behind the ball, and then that would be it. Whereas here we're brushing it upwards, so we're yeah. using it as a launch pad, as a trigger to get going forward. So, with that thought process, we're going to try and take that now onto a normal teed area and feel like we stay behind it and hit upwards a little bit more and see if we can change that launch angle. Right, so we're just going to hit a few shots, getting that kind of feeling. Again, we want the We've got the basket in place there so we can feel a bit of swing direction, start direction off yep. to the right. But that feeling as if we were on the upslope there is crucial. So we want to start just a fraction on the right side, not loads, just a fraction on the right side. And then feeling as we're turning that right knee straightens and the pressure then sits over the heel. As the hips turn, we're using that launch pad up nicely to push the ball up and forward. So into the right heel with the uh, hip turn. That's it, and then let the arms flow. When you're making your practice swing, you let them flow. Let them go through. Okay. Right, there we've gone a little forward again. That's it. That's the movement. We can recreate more of that movement. That's going to be really, really nice. Beautiful. Ah, oh, monged an ear of me. That's ridiculous, it's great. 
So it's yeah. you know, the difference there is in that going up. So when we bring SkyTrack back out in a minute and we get the launch data yeah. from that, you know, instantly we've seen the ball going up in the air more. So we're going to start to see a change in that launch conditions, which is going to help us in terms of our carry distance as well. Okay, so fraction of pressure starts on the right side. That's it, we've got the hip to the rotation. So, you know, if we, if we split the body into two, the bottom half goes first in the down swing. That means the top half follows. Right, not quite as good a, a height and trajectory as the, the one before it, but you know, we're looking at stuff, okay, we're hitting more upward on it, which is good. Hit one more and then we'll get some sky track data. Right, so a little bit lower on that one, a little bit more forward as we go through. Right, let's go and get some data on those. Beautiful. Wow. Well, oh, you lost a bit of balance there, but that was awesome. Flash that. That's so good. Right, so, you know, when we look at that there, we've increased the, the distance of carriers just increased hugely there, originally going into around sort of 80 yards, 90 yards, good shots being at around about 115 yards. We're now talking of carry up to 140 yards and an overall distance of over 160 just by making chain, two little small improvements. I'm going to say the word changes again, child, I mean. So two small improvements to what's happening in a fraction of the backswing and then what's happening in the downswing. Right, so let's put that away. So the key things now that we know is that hitting the ball off the tee further, a lot of it is down to do with how we set up and, and whether or not we're our angle of attack and our launch angle is too steep. The great thing about having something like a launch monitor, sky track here, or if you've got a flight grid, whatever, um, is you get that instant feedback, tells you the confirmation of what's happened, and you can measure by how much that improves, which is the key to it. Measuring it and knowing how much you you're improving then gives you the confidence to know that on the golf course, you can make those movements and you will see the results, you will see the improvements. Yeah. And that's the key thing. So you guys watching there, you need to go and find out. You know, Go and find yourself, have a little look around, go and find yourself a, a, a good golf pro who's got some technology, who can measure and then continue to measure your development so you can see your improvements both in practice and then out on the golf course and on the range. So the driver is done. We're going to have a little look. Episode three, we're going to look at, we're just going to squeeze it into one. Like, no, we're just going to do the driver. Episode three, fairway, wood, hybrid. Because again, ball position, set up position, that will all have a knock on effect. How we'd hit it off a tee, how we'd hit it off the deck as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, post your comments in the box below. Love to hear as much as possible from you guys. Also, subscribe to Lloyd on his YouTube channel. What is your YouTube channel? Tell the viewers what the name of it is. It's Captain Caveman's Golf Evolution. There we go. Captain Caveman's Golf Evolution. Funny enough, it's the same name. That's the series. That's yeah. the series. So, the Golf Evolution is fully underway. Thanks for watching as always. Don't forget to check out Instagram for the behind the scenes and the practice and the little bits and bobs that are going to flow from there. And the challenges, post your challenge comments in there as well. I don't know what today's challenge might be on this episode. We shall soon see. Guys, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Cheers guys.